London, W. For your edification and education, Light and Shade, a program of luminosity and umbra. Act one, Let There Be Light, starring O'Kelly and Hano. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Well, as you can see, I am here on my own. Now, before I can introduce you to my very charming assistant, I must first perform a little magic. Now, here we have a, well, a not very ordinary frame holding a perfectly ordinary piece of glass. Nothing very special about it. You can see clearly right through it. Now, before your very eyes, with just this glass here and a little help from my friend on the lights, here you see me. And now, in the glass, you see my reflection. But with just one wave of my hand, let there be light. Well, how's it done? Quite simple, really. Unless there's a light shining on something, you can't see it. And in this case, the it was me. When the lights went down, I walked into place behind the glass. And because there was no light shining on me, you couldn't see me. The only light in the studio was on me. The glass acted like a mirror, and all you could see was my reflection. But when I said, let there be light, our lighting man, John Summers, switched the lights on me, and hey presto, I appeared. As long as there's light shining on me, you can see me. But turn the lights off. Act two, Midnight Cowboy. A lot of television effects depend on the use of light and shade. But we'd never get shadows at all if it wasn't for something about light that's very special. Light rays always travel in straight lines. They can't bend around a corner. And that's why we get shadows. A shadow is a place that light rays cannot reach. So standing in front of a light like this, the rays get cut off. They can't bend round and get into this space between me and the floor. The shadow fills all this space. It's not just the shape you see on the floor. And because there's no light in this space, you can't see my face. In fact, you probably know already that it isn't me at all. That's right. You've been listening to Fergus and looking at me. And now that there's a second light on, you can see that I've got two shadows, one for each light. But the first shadow isn't as strong as it was. The more lights, the more shadows. But they get weaker and weaker until when I've got lights coming from all around me, I don't have a shadow at all. Act three, me and my shadow. You've probably noticed that your shadow looks quite a bit like you do but there are important differences between me and my shadow. In profile, from the side, I have a nose, a mouth, and a chin, but uh, no eyes and no ears. If I turn and face you, now I have ears, but still no eyes. 
and now I've lost my nose, my mouth, and my chin. Now I can have no arms at all, one arm, or two arms. And I can have no fingers, or, whoops, five fingers. And you've also probably noticed that your shadow makes all the movements you do. see it? No, you don't. Three identical circular shadows. But what shapes cast the shadows? Three balls? Three discs? Or, well, what do you think? Let's spin them around. A ball, a disc, and a cylinder. And what's casting these two identical shadows? something you can do yourselves. You can play shadow games with your friends. You'll need a box. We've cut the front out so that you can see what I'm doing. Obviously you won't need to do that. But what you will need to do is to cut a fairly large hole at one end of the box and cover it with tracing paper to make a screen. Then at the other end you'll need to cut another hole so that you can shine a, a torch or a projector through it. You can probably hear that we've got a projector. Then you'll need some objects to cast shadows on the screen. You can get your friends to stand at the other side of the screen, try and guess what the objects are.
all sorts of things to make unusual shadows. You can even use your hands. Some people are very good at making hand shadows. Ladies and gentlemen, Bablu Malik. Light Fantastic! convinced by our little horror story. It all depended on using shadows to give you very special information. Now we used a lamp on the floor to throw strange shadows on my face so that I looked very sinister when I was pretending to scare Anne out of her wits. Although you may not know it, we're using shadows all the time to give us information. What do you make of these? <laughs> play. When we're standing like this with the light behind us, all you can see is a silhouette. Now, although you can tell which of us is which, you can't tell which way we're facing. Well, I'm facing towards you. But I have my back to you. Now, you can make a large silhouette. What you need is a piece of card or paper. Then you pin it to the wall and draw around somebody's shadow and then cut it out. Well, I've drawn round Anne's shadow, and I've cut most of it out already. Silhouettes are called after a Frenchman, Etienne de Silhouette. Here's a poem about him. Monsieur Etienne de Silhouette was slim and uniformly black. His profile was superb, and yet he vanished when he turned his back. Oh, that's not right. Oh, you're right. Oh, Fergus, that's not right either. Why don't you try turning it upside down? That's better. Well, you've seen Fergus making a large silhouette. If you're very careful, you can make some smaller ones like these. I'm sure you recognise these two characters. And this is an old London taxi. But what
What's this character doing here? <laughs> Anything to report, number one? All's well, sir. On course and with this wind, we'll have the treasure safely in port by noon tomorrow. Boat on starboard bow, sir. Friend or foe? Can't tell, sir. But she's running up a flag. That can only mean pirates, sir. Action stations, number one. Man the guns. <laughs> What are you going to do with us? <laughs> Run out the plank! Run out the plank! Treasure! Ha <laughs> ha! We're rich! Scupper the boat! <laughs> Land away, come! be caught? Will the treasure be discovered? Why don't you use shadows and silhouettes to finish off our story? Thank <laughs> you. 